Hey, my name is Marcus Ansem, so I'm a master of wine, and today I'm going to give you my 10 favorite Italian varieties and regions. As you probably know by now, I have a little bit of a thing for Italian wines. Italy is arguably the largest wine producing country in the world and its diversity is unrivaled. Officially there's 605 listed endemic varieties in Italy and in Jancis Robinson's wine grapes book she lists 377 varieties. And it's rumoured there's actually over 2,000 indigenous varieties in the country. In addition to this there's 75 DOCG wines, 329 DOC wines and many, many other IGT wines. No wonder people feel a little bit daunted when it comes to understanding Italian wine. So what I thought I'd do in this video is give you a snapshot into my top 10 favorite varieties, the regions they come from, and some of the styles that make the best wines. The list is obviously not exhaustive and it represents my own personal tastes. There's some awesome styles and varieties um, that don't make the list, so I apologize in advance. And here they are in no particular order. So number one, Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo makes one of the most important red wines in the world in Barolo and Barbaresco. You can argue amongst yourselves which you prefer. Barolo. Barbaresco. Barolo. No. Barbaresco. Barbaresco. It's a wine grape associated with Piemonte in the north. Um, it's also found in generic Lang DOC wines. Uh, Gemi and Gatna are also great examples. Uh, Valtellinos, uh, actually a Nebbiolo based wine from Lombardy. Um, Nebbiolo in many ways is a paradox. It's often the first variety to uh, bud burst, um, but the last to ripen. It's got extremely pale color, yet it's one of the most tannic of all varieties. The wines tend to be high in acidity, high in alcohol, high in tannins, but really low in color. The best wines can actually age for 50 plus years. The wines have got aromas of cherries, tar, roses, truffles, uh, and spices. These wines go best with dishes that have got a high fat content just because of the high amount of tannin and acidity that they've got. Three good examples here, I would say. So sort of on the mid-range entry level, I would say uh, this is a Lang DOC. This is uh, Elio Sandri, the 2019 vintage, a fantastic producer, and their Lang Nebbiolo is excellent. Uh, I've got a couple of Barbarescos here. I could have picked uh, Barolos just as easily. Um, this is the Prodotori de Barbaresco. Great mid-range value Barbaresco. Barbaresco, I would say. And uh, on the high end, Pio Cesare is a very consistent producer. This is their 2016 Barbaresco. I'll put links to all this in the, uh, in the notes. Next. So number two, Sangiovese. It's the most uh, planted variety in Italy and most well known really from Tuscany and to a lesser degree from Umbria and Lazio. Um, it can be a bit of a chameleon due to its massive clonal variation and response to water. Um, the best examples come from older vines with low yields grown on hillsides, which limits the size of the berries and the bunches. Um, some of the best wines in Italy, including Chianti, Chiani Classico, uh, Brunello di Montalcino, Rosso di Montalpulciano, Vino Nobile di Montalpulciano, and Morellino di Scansano are all based on Sangiovese. It has aromas of cherries, black olives, black tea, leather, baking spices. It's high in acidity, medium to full bodied, and has medium fine grain tannins. These wines are born to go with Tuscan cuisine. Uh, I've given a couple of examples in previous videos of good Sangiovese. Here I have a tremendous one, Brunello di Montalcino. This is from the 2015 vintage La Girla. I'll link it in the show notes. Three, Alianico. Alianico is a bold, complex bruiser of a grape variety. It's a grape that grows mostly in Campania and Basilicata, although it also grows in Molise, 
Puglia and Calabria. It has early bud burst and needs a lot of dry heat and sunshine to ripen it, which can happen as late as November in southern Italy. It makes big full bodied wines. They're deeply colored, high in tannin and acidity, and they'll often age beautifully. In Campania, the most famous examples are Tarassi and Alianico de Tuberno. In Basilicata, the best wine comes from Alianico de Bolture. The wines have got lots of color, alcohol, and tannin with aromas of plums, black pepper, balsamic, and cherries. As they age, they evolve smoky, meaty, and leathery aromas. They go particularly well with heavy meat-based stews such as ragouts. I've got a few examples here, actually. Uh, on the less pricey side, I'd say the Alianico de Volture from Grikos, the Grifalco, is excellent. Uh, this is from the 2018 vintage. Then at the higher end, something like uh, Quinta Decimo, Terra de Cleano, and this is an Irpinia, and this is from the 2016 vintage. And then classic, this is uh, Mastro Berardino. This is their 2014 Reserva Taurasi, their Radici. So number four, Norello Mascalese. This is a red grape um, grown principally in Sicily and Sardinia. Norello Mascalese is named after the Mascali area in Cantania, where the grapes thought to have originated. It's grown mainly in the northeastern side of Sicily, where it's often blended with small portions of Norello Capuccio, such as in the Etna Rosso DOC. While it can be used for blending, it's often made into straight varietal wine. The grape itself is um, quite closely related to Sangiovese. And via DNA analysis, it actually proved to be the offspring of the Calabrian wine grape variety, Montenegro Bianco with Sangiovese. So, What's it taste like? Usually has a fairly subtle, um, pale ruby red color. It's got red berry fruits, aniseed, slightly floral, spicy. Barrel aged versions show typical vanilla and baking spice. The palette's quite tannic. It's got bright acidity and structure. Uh, not too unlike Nebbiolo, quite mineral. This robust profile makes it a perfect match with Mediterranean dishes. Interestingly, the uh, Famous Piemonte producer Guy has recently released an Etna Rosso called Ida, which I'm uh, yet to try. Uh, Planeta is one of the uh, um, most successful producers in, uh, in Sicily. This is their Etna. This is the 2019 vintage. It's good wine, I should give it a shot. It's so number five, Barbera. So Barbera is an Italian red grape um, thought to have originated in the hills around Piemonte. Best examples, uh, Barbera d'Asti, Barbera d'Alba, Barbera de Monferrato. Again, you can argue amongst yourselves about uh, which is the best appellation. Barbera d'Asti. Love. In Piemonte, it usually ripens after Dolcetto, but before Nebbiolo. As a result, it's often planted in slightly inferior locations compared to the more difficult to grow Nebbiolo. Um, the grapes can make wines that are deeply colored, they've got high acidity and soft tannins. Barbaria generally shows high affinity with oak barrels and if it's cropped low, it can make some seriously good wines. I particularly like many of the examples around uh, Barbaria de Asti, in part because they've got many of the best vineyard sites, uh, whereas around Alba, those excellent sites always tend to go to Nebbiolo. So for the example I chose, is a Barbera Dasti. This is the 2019 from Paolo Conterno.